to the very last presentation, uh, I think this is a, it's a, a, a very interesting way to, to start a research project and it clearly shows uh, what you're aiming for. And I, I was wondering because you clearly you're focused or you are interested in, uh, in, in uh, accounting for this possible transformation in terms of how humanitarian interventions played out in the last decade and whether or not there was even an intervention to, to speak of. Uh, but I, I was wondering if you also are planning on accounting for certain normative developments that clearly affected uh, or, or are considered to be one of the reasons why we are seeing less formal uh, humanitarian interventions. And I've, I'm, of course, thinking of, of the issue of R2P and responsibility to protect and whether or not that should also be taken into account uh, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the research design uh, of your project. Uh, because clearly, uh, from the, the offset, I would probably argue the, one of the reasons why we are seeing that kind of trend in, in terms of seeing less formalized humanitarian interventions might, be, might just be because some of the very recent ones uh, really went badly and, and overused the tools that they had at their disposal. And so that might be one actual uh, route to pursue uh, your, your research as well. And may, another suggestion that I would possibly, uh, I, I could possibly make here uh, is that maybe humanitarian interventions have also gone, gone uh, a bit, um, they've also ad possibly adopted different routes than from the past. We were probably very used to, uh, to consider humanitarian interventions as those uh, led by the UN or big UN interventions and big UN peacekeeping uh, missions. And I, I, I could pos probably make the argument that we are now possibly seeing the same kind of number, the same number of humanitarian interventions but possibly assuming uh, different formats, maybe on a more regional level uh, with less flashy uh, initiatives or missions, which might be one of the reasons why they are also uh, going under the radar, so to speak, in terms of an overall uh, depiction uh, of uh, humanitarian interventions. But those are just a very few uh, comments that you might find helpful uh, as you move forward uh, with, with that project. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Ekrem, uh, if you could, uh, I would challenge you to, to try and, and, and give a very last comment in, in, a, in just a very brief three minutes or so. Yeah, uh, but I'll, I'll give you the... with one or two minutes. Okay, okay thank you for uh, feedback. And uh, I, no I note that. Uh, first of all, uh, there is uh, really, uh, really uh, lots of uh, literature in the first transformation of the humanitarian intervention after the uh, Cold War. Uh, but we know this uh, new transformation after the Cold War second transformation. Uh, you know, uh, everyone knows uh, there is a uh, humanitarian intervention, very broad concept. Uh, there is political aspect, aspect of that, uh, ethical aspect, aspect and military aspect of humanitarian intervention, but uh, we limited our research with just the military aspect of the humanitarian intervention. We just focus how the countries applied their intervention uh, before the 2000s and now how they applied. Uh, we notice uh, after the Kosovo, there is increasing willingness uh, to countries about uh, using air power not much the manpower. Be, be, uh, before the Kosovo, uh, countries intervene uh, really on manpower and they are trying to solve a uh, problem apart from the uh, military issues, not just to uh, stop the violence. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, there is a very concept uh, subsidies for the humanitarian intervention. For example, there is no concept of R2B before the 2005. And uh, 2000, after the 2005, we uh, witnessed a, a responsible to protect R2P. Uh, and now Brazil have a, uh, another, uh, I forget the name of this, uh, another concept. And we will uh, emerge 
uh, humanitarian intervention, r and the peacekeeping operations under the umbrella of the uh, humanitarian intervention. And we will pick our case uh, according to our uh, identified case selection uh, criteria. That's why I said uh, the criteria is the uh, most part of the job. Uh, okay, I will, but uh, I will t- take into contra- consideration your uh, comment. Uh, thank you for uh, feedback. And uh, another question, I will be here. Okay. Thank you, Ekrem. Uh, unfortunately, we are, we are really running short on time and we really have to, to close down this panel. Uh, I would like to thank Andrew, Paul, Ekrem, and Anna for, for this uh, world tour that we took with, with this panel. We, we went to, 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 to very different and very interesting topics that touched upon uh, different dimensions of international relations and the Eurasian. Uh, but uh, I'd like to commend you all for your presentations. Uh, I would like to also uh, to tell you that in just a few minutes, we'll have uh, a book uh, presentation a book discussion panel, actually, on America in Afghanistan, foreign policy and decision-making from Bush to Obama to Trump by Professor Shaifullah Durrani. Uh, I would invite you all to stay on this very uh, same Zoom meeting link. Uh, to those of you uh, will still be a part of the remaining uh, day of the conference tomorrow, uh, I wish you all a very good work proceedings, and uh, I hereby close uh, this panel. Thank you so much and uh, have a very good rest of the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you.